Thank mm-hmm. you.
Grace and peace to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus. I pray that this week has been an exceptional week for you all. Um, I'm so happy and I'm so glad and filled with joy to be able to come before you all every Thursday um, to bring to you all the word of God uh, that you all may learn, you all may be strengthened, you all may be edified, uh, and that you all may receive what God has for your life. Amen. So if you can hear me, type the number one. I want to make sure that you all can hear me well. If you can hear me, type the number one. If you can hear me, type the number one. If you can hear me, type the number one. Amen. Mama Terry, it's good to see you. I pray that you are you're feeling better. My son, Kendrick, God bless you, son. I'm so glad to see you. Um, and anybody else who I cannot see, Amari, God bless you. I'm so glad to see you online. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're not going to be on very long. Um, I do have something to share with you all that I think is extremely important. Um, I believe it is extremely profound. And I know that this will help you understand uh, a sense of your walk with God, where you're going, your direction, and in uh, the speed by which you should be getting there. Amen. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, make sure you join. Turn on your notifications so you can get notified anytime I go live. Um, so that you can receive what God has for your life. Um, also, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Like the video. Don't just send up the hearts. I'm glad you all send up hearts. I love you all too. God bless you. But please like the video to make sure that the video can reach as many people as possible so that others can receive what God has to say to them for their life. Even those who don't believe, even those who are against me, even those who want to discredit me, even those who are enemies, they still need to hear the word of God, that God would prick their heart, open their ears, open their eyes, change their life, that they would be continued followers of the Lord Jesus for the rest of their life. Amen. So make sure you give the video a thumbs up, like the video so that we can reach more people and win souls for the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, Hallelujah. This week has been a, a, a tremendous week. There have been some shifts and some changes that have taken place that are um, wonderful advancements, I'll say. Uh, God is moving. God is leading by his spirit. And uh, with what is being done, um, many lives will be impacted and changed for the glory of God. So, um, God is good. Amen. Um, there's something extremely important that I want to share with you before we get into what I have to share on tonight. I did just come from a, another teaching, a brief teaching, uh, earlier. So, um, that's why everything is kind of set up. I did not want to, um, be late or be behind on making sure that I meet you all tonight. So I made sure to have everything set up and soon um, everything will always be set up. Um, once, uh, once we get another space and then everything will always be ready to go uh, at our disposal. Amen. So we will start on time 
continually. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, hear me, children of God, and hear me extremely well. Um, there are many people who deal with depression and anxiety in their life because they they are living according to people's expectations many people expect so much from everyone else but have little expectations for themselves and the moment that someone begins to set an, an, an expectation for your life and you don't believe that you're capable of meeting that expectation a few things happen. You get depressed. Anxiety sets in. You begin to doubt yourself. Uh, you run away. You try to hide. You feel unworthy. There are many, many, many different things that take place and happen when expectations are set on your life. Now, there are some realistic expectations and there are some unrealistic expectations whereby these expectations that are given to you, uh, the one who set the expectations can't even meet it themselves. <laughs> Yasmin, my daughter, God bless you. I'm so glad to see you. God bless you. Uh, but people begin to set these expectations that they know that you cannot meet and when you don't meet them then they try to slander bash you belittle you uh make you feel less than unworthy but they can't even meet those same expectations if they put the same expectations on themselves that they placed on you now the only one who has the ability or who has the power and the authority to place expectations on you and your life is God. He's the only one. And his expectations, they may seem, and hear me, they may seem far-fetched. They may seem beyond reach. They may seem like it's not obtainable, but even in the midst of them being unobtainable, if that's a word, <laughs> even if they seem like they're out of reach, when you begin to pursue what God says to do, you might be nervous or scared in the beginning. But as you're going, there's this peace that is given to you while you're doing it. And your confidence is developed <laughs> every step that you take during your obedience. <laughs> Are you hearing me? So when you begin to obey, even though it may seem scary, God gives you peace. And the reason why he gives you peace is because guess what? He's with you in your obedience. Hallelujah. So with God being with you in your obedience, the expectations that have been placed on you by God now allow your faith to increase and to experience the supernatural things of God for your life. Are you hearing me? So, the expectations of man, some are good because they want to see you become all that God has created you to be. 
because they believe in you. But then there are some expectations that are set for you that are meant to be set for you to fail. When you feel or you discern the motives of those type of intentions of expectations that have been set on you by someone, a separation needs to take place because their whole plan and device is to destroy you and not to uplift you or build you. Anything that is meant to destroy you is from the enemy. It's not from God. God will cause you to go through suffering. So he'll allow something to happen, but he won't destroy you. Okay. Only the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So anytime it's trying to destroy you, it's only trying to destroy you so that it can control you. So that it can now capture you and hold you captive to their plans, their decisions for your life. It's meant to put you in bondage so that you cannot move into what God has for you because you are a slave. But I prophesy to many of you on this call tonight that no longer shall you be a slave to those expectations that were wrongly set upon your life, that from today, you will begin to receive and inherit and walk in the expectations that God has set for your life. That as you begin to walk in these expectations, you will begin to see mountains come down, doors open up, seas being parted, miracles and the miraculous begin to happen in your life because of you breaking away from these false expectations that the enemy has tried to place on your life. Hallelujah. If you agree and you receive, I want you to type the number three. And stay with me because I'm moving tonight. <laughs> and I pray that you all can feel it in the spirit. Because we are moving, moving, moving. Because I'm not playing with the enemy. I am not. And if you are serious about your life, then you won't play with him either. Amen. Make sure you share this with as many people as you can. Share, 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 send it out. Share it, share it, share it, share it, share it. So other people will be blessed. Hallelujah. So let's pray. And then we will get into the word of God. Amen. My father and my God, oh, how holy and how wonderful is your name. May your name be exalted upon high. Father, you are seated above the highest heaven. There is no heaven that can contain your glory. There is no heaven that can contain all who you are. For you are too mighty and we magnify you. So how can you be contained by any heaven? that you have created, but they are contained in you. So Father, we exalt your holy name. We magnify your name. We magnify your very being that because of you, we have life and we have that life more abundantly. So Father, may your name be glorified upon high because every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you, Lord Jesus, are Lord. So Father, we submit to you Everything that we do, everywhere we go, everything that we think, every thought we think, every place we touch. Father, we ask that you would go before us. Father, forgive us, cleanse us, purify us of all unrighteousness. Purify us of all unrighteousness. Cleanse us that we may be able to receive of your word on tonight that the ears of the people would be open tonight, that the eyes of the people would be open tonight, that they would know you more clearly, more you, know you, O oh God, deeper, know you and see you move greater in their life. Father, we thank you because you are with us and you always speak to us. 
Forgive me, O Lord, for I have sinned before you. Cleanse us, purify us, make us whole. In the name of your only Son, your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I want you to go with me to Ecclesiastes, chapter number 3. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. However you say it, Ecclesiastes, 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 Ecclesia, whatever, however you pronounce it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter number three, verse number 11. If you can't find it, I'll help you. It's after the book of Proverbs. Okay. It's after the book of Proverbs. Ecclesiastes. Chapter number three, verse number 11. When you got it, send us some hearts in the chat. When you have it, send us some hearts in the chat. And then we're going to read it together. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. Are you ready? One, two, three. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Hmm. Hallelujah. Let's read that one more time. X, my brother, God bless you, man. God bless you, man of God. Hallelujah. Let's read it one more time. Ecclesiastes 3 and 11. 1, 2, 3. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Hallelujah. Now. Many of you have been so concerned with where you are in your life because you don't know if you're on track, if you're behind schedule, if you are even inside of God and in his time. Many of you, I believe, feel like you are behind schedule and oftentimes when you feel like you're behind schedule you're rushing in everything that you do trying many different things hoping that something sticks to justify that and what you're doing is right that what you're doing is in the will of God But can I tell you, when you find yourself in the will of God and in his time, everything that you've been asking for, everything that you have been looking for, desiring and expecting <laughs> happens quickly. It does not take long. A sign that you are out of place is that things are not happening for you with speed. Things that God has set up for you, when you are behind schedule and you get in his time, he will accelerate your time. He will not allow you to continue to waste more time because he has set a plan for your life. He has caused a plan for your life to be at work and to happen and to take place. 
So when you finally get in him and trust him with everything and you begin to shape and change your life to look more like the Lord Jesus and to conform to what God desires for your life and not what you desire for your life and on your time, then you begin to see that, hey, God, everything that I've been wanting and desiring, you have now made it readily available and quickly unto me. When I tried to make it happen in my own strength, it failed. It took many years and I still didn't even get anywhere close. But the moment that I stopped, the moment I surrendered, the moment that I said, I can't do this no more, I gotta go. The moment that I said, you know what? I'm gonna stop trying to make it happen in my own strength and wait for you, God, to do it for me. Hmm. Then when you finally get your hands off of your life, that's when God gets his hands in your life. And everything that you've been looking for, he begins to manifest quickly. I'm reminded of a story in my life where I was going through one of the roughest times of my life. Finances were dry. And this was, this was after I had been homeless. Finances were dry. I was still living in a, a townhouse, um, driving pretty well, but I was scared every time I would go and open up my bank account <laughs> because I knew in there either it was going to be Low or close to low. <laughs> and I have a son I have to take care of. So, Lord, why is my stuff dry? And I never got a response from God. He never told me why it was dry. But the moment that everything was dry, Things begin to fall away from my life. Things that I loved, that I held so dear to me, that I valued, that I continued to work hard for. What I held on to began to leave my life. Begin to separate from me. And it was heartbreaking. It was devastating. Because I had worked so hard to get to a place and to obtain everything that I had just to lose it, just to struggle yet again. And I remember asking God, I said, God, how is it that you brought me from a long way, but now I'm right back here at the place of struggle? Am I not doing what you told me to do? Am I not being obedient? Am I not following your instructions? What is it that is keeping me from experiencing what you have for me? How could it be plentiful and fruitful? And this same thing that was fruitful and plentiful has now dried up. God, make it make sense. Because right now, it's not. And the Lord, let me tell you, said nothing. He allowed me to continue to go through what I was going through. He allowed me to continue to face the suffering in the midst of that. And even while he was not speaking and saying anything to me about my situation, <laughs> he was still there because God was watching how I was handling everything. Would I become bitter? Would I forsake him? Would I allow my situation to cause me to fall into depression? Allow other situations to rule and govern what I do to allow temptation to set in and to push me 
into something that is not what God wants for my life. Hallelujah. So as I was going through this place of dryness and things were separating, falling away, leaving, instead of what most people would do, which is run from God, which is not pray, which is not fast, which is not get in their word, which is not go to church and try to figure out how they can do what they do in their own strength. I did exactly what God asked us to do is to cast our cares upon him. Instead of worrying about what I was going through and where I was at, my main focus on my main focus was on who he is and where my walk needs to be with him. I need to make sure that even in the midst and in the face of struggle and trial, that I would remain with my father. Because if he remains with me, even when I make my bed in hell, how is it that I want to abandon God when he doesn't abandon me? So instead, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to remain closer to him instead of blame him for why I'm going through or facing what I'm facing at this present moment. So I prayed, I studied, I fasted, I invested in myself. I invested in who I am as a man of God. I invested in my gifting. I invested in my calling. I invested time with God. Because when you invest that time with God, that is an investment that will never fail. Are you hearing me? And even in that low place with my finances being tight, I invested my seed. Which is where many of you struggle. Hallelujah. Many of you struggle with giving your seed, with sowing your seed. Many of you struggle. You find yourself going up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Because you keep sowing your seed in places that have not yet proved that what they have or the soil they have can grow and produce a tree. Now I'm talking to somebody. I'm prophesying to somebody. But yet, in the soil that I sowed, I began to reap a harvest and it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew. Then when I realized, why am I trying to hold on, run after or chase what decided to leave me? Let go of what has let me go. Because the moment you let go of what has let you go, you now change your focus from holding on to releasing and being able to grab tight to the hem of the Lord's garment. In him, there is no lack. In him, there is no struggle. In him, he gives to you the desires of your heart. He gives to you the very thing that you have been praying for, for seven years. He gives to you the very thing that you've been looking for him to do for the past four and a half years. Because you are repositioned from looking backwards to looking up to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you have to make sure that your seed is planted in the right soil. 
Many people think that seed is just money. Do you not understand that you are the seed of God? And if you are not planted in the right soil, meaning another man or woman of God, then how can you grow into the tree that God has created you to be? <laughs> Hear me. The Bible says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Whose seed? What's the seed? The seed of God. Who's the seed of God? Us, his children. Hear me, you are a seed. When you are not planted in the right soil, you will always be dry. And everything you do will be dry. So you're busy trying to give and sow your seed, your money, your finances into every flying doctrine that you hear, playing God like he's the lotto. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hoping to hit the jackpot. Thinking God is the casino. When really God is watching you and saying, you yourself aren't planted anywhere. So if you aren't planted anywhere, you cannot expect. Hallelujah to reap a harvest. So it doesn't matter how many times you take the leaves from your branch and spread them out in the wind. No matter where they land, nothing will grow because you're not planted in any soil that is causing you to reproduce. Your seed must be planted in the soil, which is why I talked about being planted last week. Now, as it pertains to God's divine time, when you're in his divine time, things don't take long. Because as I was going through this dry place, when things separated and I let go of what let go of me, and I began to hold on to his unchanging hand, hallelujah, I begin to experience, I begin to see the increase coming as I invested and I sowed into who I have been called to be in my time with God. And as I begin to obey the instructions of our great God, increase begin to happen steadily, continually, 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 putting other people, sending other people to me, causing other things to happen in the lives of other people to bring everything together, part of his masterful plan, which is what he designed for my life from the beginning. The reason why some of you cannot experience fruitfulness is because there are people attached to you that God has decided not to bless because when he blesses you, they'll have to be blessed at the same time. And God already knows their heart. So because he knows their heart, he says, listen, because you're so attached to them, I cannot bless you because their heart is meant to deceive you. Their desire is meant to see you fail. Their desire is to see you crumble. Hmm. I'm talking to somebody. I'm in somebody's Kool-Aid cup right now. And the longer you keep trying to hold on to what does not care about you, why do you expect me to bless you? when they're just going to take the blessing that I give to you, manipulate you to get you to give it to them hmm, so that they can take your blessing and run away with it. 
The enemy comes to kill. The enemy comes to destroy. And the enemy comes to steal. Just because someone says, I love you, does not mean. <laughs> hey, just because someone says, I love you, does not mean that they love you. It just means they love the things you can do for them. And as long as you do for them, they love you. But when you can no longer do for them, they leave you. So how is it that they can leave if they love? Because they did not love you. They loved what you could do. Hallelujah. If you have not yet liked the video, like the video, we should have more likes on the video. Give the video a thumbs up. So hear me. And hear me well, children of God. Things have been progressing tremendously in my life. The moment that I begin to let go of what let go of me, whereby the time that I thought I had wasted, hear me, the time that I thought that I had wasted, God restored the time. He accelerated the time in a matter of a year. The place that was once dry, is now tremendously fruitful. Whereby I look around and I'm like, man, is that my bank account? It sure is. <laughs> it ain't never been like this. Mm. Because when you let go of what does not want you, you can grab hold of the things that have been waiting for you. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to right now, but you need to let go of the things that you've been so attached to for so long that have not produced you any kind of return. Once you let those things go, you can begin to grab on to everything that God has prepared for you. Everything that God has set up for your life, the fruitfulness, the harvest, you can begin to take it and eat of it because you let go of the things that have died. I'm prophesying to somebody because now is your time what you've been attached to when you separate it will hurt go through the pain of being hurt because the moment that you heal from being hurt you will look back and not even remember the pain that you were dealt because of how fruitful god has made your ladder, your future. Hallelujah. Ah, I feel like I'm talking to myself. So, if you feel like you have ever been behind, God can accelerate your time. The years that the canker worm stole, God will recover all. He will restore the years that the canker worm has stole. So if you feel like you have been behind, 
in time in your life for what God has created you to do. Don't worry because now is your time. If you are hearing what I'm teaching you tonight, this means that now is your time. Deliverance is taking place in your mind right now. Your soul is being redeemed right now. Your heart is being restored right now. I speak restoration into your life right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You shall recover all. So the years that you feel that you've wasted or that you've been behind, it can take one moment, one decision, one time. Hallelujah. One word from God that can change your entire life, that can accelerate you to a place that you could not get even if you spent your entire life getting. Because one waters, one sows, but it is God who gives the increase. So it doesn't matter how many times you water. It doesn't matter how many times you sow. It doesn't matter where you sow. Nothing will be fruitful because if you're sowing in the wrong place, if you're watering in the wrong area, there cannot be an increase that comes because God sees what you're doing. He sees where you're sowing. He sees where you're watering. And he says, no, you are watering in the wrong place. You are sowing sowing the wrong seeds. You are sowing in the wrong soil. So I will not cause increase to come out of a place that should not. <laughs> hey. God gets the increase. God gives the increase. So when you have not received increase, it's because you're not in the right place. If you have not received increase in your life and your peace and your trust in your faith in your finances and your business and your family, if you have not received increase, you are not in the right place. Hallelujah. If you can hear me, type the number one. God has made everything beautiful in its own time. In fact, the scripture says God has made everything beautiful in his time. <laughs> so the moment that things aren't beautiful in your life is because you are not in his time. I wish you could hear me. But when you get in God's time, everywhere you turn your head, whether you look up, whether you look down, whether you look behind you and all around you, everywhere you look is beautiful. It's plentiful. There's a harvest. Because you are in God and you are in his time. When you're in God, you are in his time. So no matter where you look, where you go, everything is beautiful. But the reason why things aren't beautiful in your life right now is because you are not in God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Malcolm, my brother, God bless you, man of God. It's good to see you on. I love you, sir. So hear me. <laughs> ah, hear me. Hear me. Everything. That's what the scripture says. It's in your Bible. So I'm not just making this up. Everything is beautiful in his time. 
everything. 100%. Everything is beautiful in his time. So the question you should ask yourself is this. Is everything beautiful in my life? If it's not beautiful, then the second question you should ask yourself, am I in God? Because even chaos should be beautiful. Because even in that chaos, you have peace because you know that God is with you because you know that you're in him and he's in you. It should not trouble you, nor should it worry you because you know you have the authority within you because of who you're in. Which is why everything should be beautiful. <laughs> hey, he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Well, if God created everything that is here on the earth, and if God created time, isn't everything in his time? Yes. Everything is in his time, but not everybody is in God. And because everybody's not in God, he will stop people's time. He will skip over people's time. He will pass up people's time. Because remember, a thousand years is but a day to God. So he will cause somebody else's time to stop. And until someone in that lineage of that seed gets in God, will he pick back up with where someone else left off and accelerate the time? Which is why there are some generations that come after you that are able to do the very things that you weren't able to do because they discovered something. They learned of a knowledge of God and his principle that you or someone else did not have. But I'm prophesying to you now that this is the year and the time that you will get in God to begin operating in what he has designed you to do. No longer will you be behind, but you will get in God and remain in God that you would prepare the foundation for your seed to increase, to flourish, to prosper, that when your seed looks at you, they'll say, mommy, daddy, grandma, grandpa, uncle, auntie. How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I need to continue on? I want to do it like you. No, baby, you're going to do it better than me. I'm going to show you how to do it, but you're going to take it further and beyond. So that God may be glorified. Now you have the ability to experience The land flowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Everything, everything is beautiful in God's timing. Now watch this. Watch this. Because also, he has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. Meaning this, when you are in God and you're in his timing, the enemy cannot find you. So the things you begin to work on that God has told you to do, 
even though the enemy prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour he cannot find you because he desires to devour you he desired to sift you as wheat but because you're in god he can't find you so what you do and what you build the enemy cannot pull down he cannot destroy. He cannot take away. He cannot lay waste to. Because it is hidden in God. Out of the sight of man. Out of the sight of any spirit. Any demon. Any witch. Any warlock. Any of the occult. Nothing that you do will be brought forth to them because when you're in God, it is hidden. And then once it is full grown and God has already made it to manifest, there is nothing that they can do because God has established it and solidified it for your life. By the time they find out about it, it's too late. They can't do anything to it because it is full grown. It is developed. This is why everything is beautiful in God's time. Because God can take what you create in him and make it full grown overnight. He's done it before. Don't believe me? Okay. Adam. Eve, he made them out of the dust of the ground. They never cried. They never asked for a bottle. They weren't spoon fed. They were full grown beings. Yet with the age of a one month, two month, three month old baby. With the capability to talk speak, walk, work. So if God can do that, then, then what makes you think that what you build in him, that he can't do it again? And by the time it is full grown, there is nothing that the enemy can do. But you must remain in him and follow his instruction so that you remain in his divine time. Because his divine time, no man can change. No man can change his time. And whatever you do in God's time lives on. Because he is eternal. God has no memory. I know I might make some people mad right now. God doesn't have a memory like how you think. Because remember, the Bible says that God throws all of our sins into the sea of forgetfulness. Okay. But God is the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. Meaning God is in yesterday. God is in the present and God is in the future all at the same time. So if he's in all those places at the same time, where within that time does God have the opportunity to have a memory? He's always present. The memory is things that have passed on. I hope you're hearing me. You only have a memory 
when you don't have the ability to go back to a place and live in it again. So if God is the same yesterday, the same today, and the same forever, he has the ability to go back and to be in every place at the same time. So where is his memory? Are you hearing me? So God has no memory like you think. So as you are moving and you do what he says to do, you're operating in him. And it is at that present time, which is why obedience is better than sacrifice. Because God is present at that moment. And when he speaks, he has spoken. And so the faster that you move and you do without hesitation, he moves. Hallelujah. So being in God's divine time allows for what you do to be hidden. Therefore, when it becomes full grown, there's nothing that can be done to it in order to destroy it. Hallelujah. So hear me. Hear me. The Lord Jesus knew this so very tremendously, intrinsically, the value of being in God and in God's time. When Jesus did the first miracle that's recorded in the gospels, his mother Mary came to him. They were at a wedding feast and the wine had ran out. And once the wine ran out, Jesus' mother came to him and said, the wine has run out. And Jesus said, woman, it is not yet my time. Because if Jesus would have began operating outside of his time, things would have still worked, but it would not have been perfect. because it was outside of God's time. When you begin to operate in God's time, everything you do works. It works. It works. It works. It works. There may be resistance, but the resistance comes to show you that God is with you in the midst of the problem. Hallelujah. So Jesus did not begin to do or move until it was his time. The moment it was his time, nothing that the Lord Jesus did failed. Everything he did, the way that he operated, was with so much authority and power that others became jealous. Many will become jealous of you because you have learned how to tap into the timing of God for your life that others will begin to envy you and become jealous of you 
because you know how to access what God has for you because of you being in him. And if they would do the same thing, they would access what God has for them. Hallelujah. This is why the Pharisees were upset with the Lord Jesus. Because Jesus was doing things in such a great magnitude that they weren't able to do. Hmm. Curtis, man of God, God bless you. Jesus was able to do things in the manner that they weren't able to do. In the number that they weren't able to do. With ease that they weren't able to do. Because of being in God's time. Children of God, hear me. When you struggle or things are hard, it's because you're doing it in your time, not God's. Many of us growing up, and if this if this was you as a child, I want y'all to put your hands up in the in the comments. That as a child, you had an idea and a time set in your life. You said, okay, by 25, I want to be married. By 26, I want to have my first child. By 27, I want to have my second child. By 28, I want to have three childs. I want to live in a big house with a picket fence and have a lot of money and this and that and all this other stuff. I want to make it to the NBA. I want to make it to the NFL, you know, and I'm going to be in the Hall of Fame and this and all that. I'm going to be the best entertainer. I'm going to be the best recording artist and all of that stuff. How many of you have done those things? Have they worked? Have they flourished? Have they prospered? Hear me. It's because you're trying to do it in your own time. Stop trying to do things on your timetable and on your schedule. Allow God to give you his desires. Allow God to give you the desires of your heart. Not giving you what you want. Like you're spoiled. A spoiled little child. But allowing him to take of himself. Pull from himself place in you and give you his desires, give you new desires, the desires of your heart that you would now desire more to remain in him, to fulfill what he has called you to do, to be what he has said, be, to build what he has said, build, to submit where he has said, submit, to give what he has said give, when he has said give, how he has said to give. And in that, you move and you operate in his divine time. Therefore, everything that you do will begin to flow. And work together. This is why the Bible says he works all things together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Now, most people think that that's a good thing. If God has to work things together for your good, it's because you were doing it outside of his time. When you do things on his time, he doesn't have to work it together because it's already together. Come on, hear me. Anything that has to be worked together is because it was broken. Anything that has to be worked together is because it was done in the wrong way. So God working things together for your good is because you didn't do it for your good. The decision you made was not the right decision. 
so it didn't work out. So he has to work it together to make it work for your good. All because you're outside of his time. Don't let the enemy trick you in getting outside of God's time. Others may look at you and say, hey, you're behind. Hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you do this? Why don't you pressure you, pressure you, pressure you, pressure you? You remain patient and remain at rest and you stay in God and you build what he said, build. You submit how he has said to submit and you do what he has said to do. When you do that, others may think that you are crazy. Others may think that you don't know what you're doing. Others might think you don't have a plan. But your plan is to move in God's time. Now, the question that you should be asking is this. How do I get in God whereby I am in his time? Do you all want to know how to get in God where you are in his divine time? Hallelujah. So what we'll do is this. I will give you four ways, four things for you to do to get in God, to get in his time. I will give you four ways on how you could do that. When we come back, we're going to give. And then once we give, when we come back, I will give you four ways that you can get in God and get in his time so that your life will begin to look beautiful and fruitful and prosperous. I will give you four ways. So I want you to prepare your heart and your mind to give. You can give via Cash App, dollar sign TC Nation HTX. Give what God has told you to give. Give as he has unctioned and put in your heart to give. Once you give, when we come back, we will go over the four key things to help you get in God and get in his time. So I want you to go and give. And then when we come back, we will dive deeper into those four things.
Hallelujah. I pray that you all had the opportunity to give. I pray that you all were able to give the way that God has placed on your heart to give. So there are four things that you can do. Four ways to be in God and to get in God's divine time. Four ways, four key ways. Now there are some specific prayers that you can pray, but we're not going to get that deep. I'm just going to tell you how you can get in God. And the first one is to pray. You must have a prayer life. If you do not have a prayer life or you do not regularly communicate with God in prayer, it's impossible for you to be in him because you don't even talk to him. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So number one, <clears throat> number one is in prayer, through prayer, praying. Number two, after you have finished praying to God, you can't just go and communicate to God, tell him everything that you want, everything that you need him to do, and then just go on about your day. When you are in a relationship with anyone, both parties have to be able to conversate back and forth to be on the same page. So after you finish speaking to God in prayer, then it is now your job to meditate, listen, see how God has answered your prayer in meditation. See the instruction, receive it from him, because that's how he speaks to you to download what it is that you've been praying for from him to do on how you can receive it. So number one is through prayer. Number two is through meditation. Hallelujah. Number three, are you ready? Number three is through fasting. If you don't fast and you don't know how to fast, it is going to be extremely difficult for you to be in God and to be on his divine time because if your flesh is too loud or too alive, that means your spirit man is not living. And in order for you to be in God and to be on his divine time, your spirit man must be alive and your spirit man must be strong. And when your spirit man is not strong, that means your flesh is alive and well. But fasting is the number one way to humble the flesh, to crucify the flesh, to deny the flesh so that your spirit man may live. So fasting is number three. Number one, prayer. Number two, meditating number three fasting and number four is studying the word of god consistently really all these four things you must do them consistently to be in god's divine time and to be in god Consistency is key to being in God. But studying his word 
is how you're able to understand what he's saying to you. Because if you don't know his word, how do you know when he's speaking to you? How do you know what he's saying? The Bible says, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. If you don't know his voice, you've been following strangers. So how do you learn his voice? Through his word. And other things in other ways, but primarily through his word. Hallelujah. So you must know the word of God. So, number one, prayer. Number two, meditation. Number three, fasting. And number four, studying the word of God. When you do those things and you couple those, th those things together, you will find yourself in God and you will find yourself knowing when your time is and not rushing to be on other people's time or meeting other people's expectations or being in... Uh, a place that you have not been prepared for yet because it's outside of your time. Be patient, wait for your time, develop while you are hidden in God so that you can become full grown. And then when God reveals you to the world, you will be beautiful and there's nothing that anybody can do about it. Because it's on his time and not on yours or anyone else's. So I pray that this word has helped you to understand God's divine time and being in God. I pray that what you heard on tonight has shifted something on the inside of you and changed you that your walk with the Lord Jesus would become more intimate beyond what you have experienced. So I will pray, I will bid you all adieu that you guys can enjoy the rest of your night. Uh, this is sweet, getting done earlier than 10, 10, 15. <laughs> God is good. Hallelujah. But I will pray. I will bid you all adieu. And I will see you all next week. Amen. Make sure you share this with somebody. Tell them to go back and watch the replay. So they will be blessed by what was shared on tonight. Amen. My Father and my God, we glorify you and we thank you because of what you have spoken and declared on tonight has come directly from your mouth. Father, thank you for using me on tonight to be able to speak to your people, to impart into your people, to teach your people and to express and to teach your word from revelation. Father, I thank you because someone was delivered on tonight, someone was set free on tonight, and someone was restored on tonight. Father, we glorify you, we exalt the name of the Lord Jesus, for we lift you high above all things. Father, let others know you more deeper let them know you more and let them know you deeper that you will begin to speak to them to guide them on to your divine time and plan for their life may you be glorified may you be exalted both now and eternally. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I love you all. I love you all. I love you all tremendously. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And may you dwell in the house of the Lord forever. God bless you all. I pray that you all have a phenomenal rest of the week. And I pray that God would show you just who he is as you journey throughout the rest of the week. I love you all, but the Lord Jesus will always love you way more than I ever can. Have a good night. And I will see you all next Thursday at 8 p.m. for another 
Testimony Bible Study. Good night. See ya.